CSS and JS lesson number two. Today we're going over the direct descendant selector. In lesson one, which you can find in the description below, we implemented the general class selector and that laid down the grain work, uh, groundwork for everything that we're going to do, do, do today. Turns out I can't talk very well right now, but whatever, we'll figure it out, right? If you look at the design down below, what we have is the same thing as the one before it, where we have an item on the right needs to match the styles from the item on the left. The item on the left has its styles coming from CSS and the item on the right has them coming from JavaScript. The only difference right now is we have an H2 inside of this uh, element and it's getting an underline and that underline has a special color. We're missing that over here. I say we solve that. What do you think? Should we? Let's do it in JavaScript, yeah. So over here, we've got our H2 direct descendant selector. So notice that this is direct descendant of all the controls. So this is technically like everything except we want a filtered set of H2. And uh, last time we went through, we have our experiments. So we're gonna be basing our nested CSS selector off of our root selection that we made before. So in pseudocode, that is something like we're going to go grab, uh, so we're going to say experiments dot uh, for each. Uh, we need the children. Let's see, experiment children. So we need that to be mapped back up. We need to make sure the child is of type H2, and then we'll apply our styles. So to kick things off with that pseudocode, I'm going to save this debugger statement and watch Chrome just load it right up. Perfect. So the reason this is important is because when I go to the console, I'll have this experiments element in context. Uh, here's experiments. Boom. That is exactly what I want. Okay, we're ready to get going. Let's start writing some functional JavaScript and think about our CSS a little bit differently. So our first task is to go through each one of our children. We need to make a direct ascendant selector. So the way that I uh, implemented that was I'm going to say experiments.flatmap. And the reason that we're doing a flat map is because we need to take the potential many children of these of these experiments and map them back up because that's what we're interested in with this selector. This selector is no longer interested in the parent nodes. It's interested in the direct descendants. So we're going to say flat map experiment because that's a single item in this experiments collection. We're going to say experiment uh, dot children and that'll give us all the nodes. Now we can see in our eager evaluation that we got an HTML collection back. I don't want that. I want an array, uh, oh, without a typo. Excellent. So let me just uh, new line that. We have our experiments flat mapped now. So this is, uh, this is a, a many to many type of relationship here, but in our case, it was only one item, which simplifies it a little bit. But again, we've gone through, we've hoisted the children back up as the main array here. So anything that we iterate on after this is now direct descendant children of our base selection of our experiments. So in here, what I need to do is I need to find just the H2 elements, right? So I can write a filter. I need to filter, ah, so convenient. And this is gonna be a child. And I'm gonna make sure that that child has a node name that's equal to H2. And look at that, we've got our, our functional programming eager evaluation down here telling us that there's an H2 match at the end of that, which means we're essentially ready for our for each that goes and applies all the styles. So I'm gonna copy that and zoom over here, take this, boom, blow that away, space that in a little bit here and write our for each. I'm even just gonna go copy this for each, paste it right there, take the styles out, boom, 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 uh, and just go back to the basics here. So we've got text decoration, and that text decoration is underlined, and we have a text decoration color, decoration, decoration color, and that color is special. Let me go grab it, it's over here. Give me that HSL value, I'll take it. Wow. Well, there we go. Okay, so we're saying for each experiment, we're gonna take all of your children and make a new array, and we're gonna filter that array based on the node name being H2, and for each of those items, we're gonna give you some styles. Perfect. If I pop back over here, we burn through our uh, debug breakpoint, boom. 
come back to the console, reload, and there we've got it. Yeah, we've got our underline and it's colored just right. Ow, I shouldn't have sang that song. I shouldn't have sang that song. Shouldn't have sang that song. I have a bad habit of victory dances and victory songs. Uh, I'm not ashamed. I'm ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Okay, I might be a little ashamed, but whatever, it's done. And so is our task. This is the end of lesson two. Lesson two, we basically learned that the direct ascendance selector is very similar to what flat map does. And by specifying H2 as the node type, we can write a filter that filters based on node name being H2. Then for each of those matches, we extend their style with some new styles. The same thing that's happening here. And look at that, the subtlety that we get through this little selector, right? Control, control, uh, H2, so subtle. Oh, hi, it's just a little brilliant, easy thing to write. And look at all the JavaScript that we had to write to recreate that. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's not that crazy. I liked flat map usage though and filter. So that was the direct ascendant selector. We are pretty much done. I hope you're enjoying these lessons. I've got a couple more planned. They get uh, exponentially more complex. We'll eventually hit some recursion and some other fun stuff. Hang out, comment, uh, visit the repo and write any comments in there. Do your own practices. Send me some video responses of you doing your own uh, functional programming CSS. It's really fun. I'll see you next time.